Well, folks, we officially made it to the first episode of the Base Talk podcast. I am super excited to kick things off. So without further ado, let's get into it. A nice place to start would be discussing key checkpoints in my own health and fitness journey where I underwent significant changes, notably in body composition. Compare and contrast different phases, the lessons I learned from the first phase and applied it to the second to achieve an overall better physique. And perhaps these insights may help guide you down the right path, whether your goals are health or performance related. First and foremost, to give you some context, prior to the first cutting phase, my training focus primarily was strength gain and skill acquisition that came in the form of practicing Olympic weightlifting, gymnastics, calisthenics, and some other types of training. And this lasted for around four years or so. The primary focus later shifted to physique development. In little under a year, I went from weighing 85 kg to 88 kg. I believe I benefited from a sensitized period wherein I had not trained bodybuilding style training for a long period of time. And when I reintroduced it, I seemed to respond quite well. And at that point, the first cutting phase began. Then phase 2.0 was in full effect. After seeing the results from my first cut, I decided I was ready to commit to a long gaining phase and spent the following three and a half years or so to physique development. I went from 85 kg to 97 kg in that period, a not so lean 97 kg. <laughs> so let's discuss some key features of both phases. The first cut, the duration was around 12 weeks and the second one was 20 weeks. Moving on to training frequency, the only real difference was I introduced an additional day when I focused on bodybuilding training from five days to six days a week. Conditioning protocol. So I pretty much took the same approach for the first and second cut. I did my best to distribute three 20 minute bouts of brisk incline walking, whether that was first thing in the morning, pre and post resistance training out of convenience because I had access to a treadmill there and then. It also tended to work well as part of a warm up and cool down protocol. Every now and then I would cycle in a different piece of equipment like the skier, rower, stairmaster, depending on how recovery was or if I just wanted to change the stimulus in some way. Calorie intake. So it was quite similar for both. I would consume anywhere between 3,600 and 4,000 calories before the initial drop. And the lowest point the calories reached for both phases was between 2,100 and 2,200 calories. The only difference was the rate at which those calories dropped, it being a little bit faster in the first phase. Nutrition. The general structure of my nutrition remained unchanged. I did follow the same underlying principles to maintain a solid foundation of health and performance. I would consume nutrient dense foods like lean meats, eggs, fatty fish, fruits, vegetables, nut butters, with the addition of some supplementation like vitamin D, creatine and magnesium. The main difference between both phases was consuming red meat daily, increasing my sodium intake, having a weekly interval of fatty fish like salmon and introducing certain supplements like collagen and inositol. Sleep, the most important without a doubt. The second time round, sleep hygiene was far better. I was in bed earlier. I was awake earlier. Anything that affected sleep, I tried to optimize it as best I could. Depending on my schedule, it generally looked like 10 p.m. in bed and up by half five or six. 
Now we've come to the meat of the operation, the learning points. This is where we upgrade that control center. This is where you learn something, gain a little bit of nuance, where you can better equip yourself and achieve your health and performance goals. Mindset. So leading up to both cutting phases. The first phase, it was my first real attempt at trying to get as lean as possible. The second time round, I had experience under my belt and I was committed to executing that plan to the best of my ability with as little distraction as possible. How it affected my mindset. Now, this was more prominent in the second phase, I noticed. Having overcome a challenge that required consistently high levels of discipline and self-control, not succumbing to that feeling of hunger, going through certain periods of fasting, I experienced a heightened sense of urgency and focus towards my own goals and pretty much every other realm or aspect of my life. And this is what I value most about going through something like a cutting phase. Managing hunger levels. So several points on this. By primarily consuming satiating foods that were high volume relative to their calories, I would consume larger meals in one sitting and avoid snacking. The majority of my calories were taken in later in the day to avoid any disruptions to sleep. One tool I applied more so in the second phase was higher calorie days or refeed days. I also noticed certain appetite suppressants really helped. I would consume a coffee as a pre-workout before training. And this tended to be the period of the day where I was most hungry. Hot drinks in general helped like a decaf. The last thing is understanding the difference in hunger levels. On the lower end of the spectrum, it's tolerable. It tends to fade if you're busy and you're, you're occupied with something else. On the other end of the spectrum, it feels like your body is genuinely craving nourishment. And this tended to come about really more so when you went through a phase of high activity. You may have changed the variable, like lowered your calories or increased your step count or added an extra session or what have you. But there, there's times where you kind of have to knuckle down and just get through it. And there's other times where you really just kind of need an extra meal. Ultimately, some mental preparation will get you through whatever challenge you come across in a cutting phase. By simply saying to yourself and accepting that you are going to feel hungry and it's going to be challenging at certain points. And this may quote unquote be a normal state for a period of time, you will get through it. Applying some pragmatic tools and going in with the right mindset will set you up for success. Energy levels. So this was somewhat similar to managing hunger levels in a sense that if you apply some pragmatic tools like time management, for example, if at all possible, you can get the most demanding tasks of the day done in a window where you tend to be the most energetic and optimizing sleep becomes increasingly more important when you're in a calorie deficit as you may not recover as quick in between sessions. Conditioning protocols for longer and shorter duration cutting phases. Simply put, for me, I noticed the low intensity type activities were far more sustainable than consistently doing high intensity interval training. I would apply high intensity interval training every now and then to a point where I could maintain and continue to progress in my resistance training. Non-exercise activity. So we've all heard the 10K step target. And this was paramount for maintaining a certain level of energy expenditure during both cutting phases. Intentionally choosing an option that required more physical effort, like taking a flight of stairs, for example, as opposed to a lift. In my case, I would take advantage of things like grocery shopping, get a backpack on, 
get two shopping bags and hold them like into a farmer's carry optimal body composition and body weight now of course this varies from person to person many variables determine your optimal body weight and body composition for me i was quite comfortable at a very lean body composition what i enjoyed most was being able to practice certain skills they felt a lot easier such as handstands and other body weight exercises by virtue of carrying around a lighter frame building a solid foundation and remaining injury free i attribute a large part of my later success to spending the time required in my earlier years learning and understanding correct position technique through skill acquisition even though the primary goal of both phases was physique development I applied the necessary skills I learned from different disciplines like Olympic weightlifting, gymnastics, calisthenics and other sports to better design a program going into both phases. Career perspective as a practitioner, I gained invaluable insights into the workings of my own body, what limits I can push, how it responds to different stimulus, which would allow me to offer better service for my own clients the final message to you this is very much a lifestyle i follow i am methodical in my approach to anything health and fitness related going through phases like these i do my very best to prioritize health retain as much muscle tissue as possible while still losing fat and as far as significant checkpoints go in my own health and fitness journey there is far more than meets the eye when you undergo physique changes and that is the inevitable character development that happens at the same time. I really do enjoy challenging myself, conquering new levels to the game regardless of what realm of life that is to really embody that high performing individual. So what's next in terms of physique development? There are a lot of things on the cards you will just have to wait for the next episode to find out. We've gone through a range of topics in this episode, some more so than others that can be discussed in greater detail in future episodes. I would also like to touch on things outside of the realm of health and fitness. That would be pretty fun. Perhaps you've gained an invaluable insight that has better equipped you to manage whatever phase you're in in your health and fitness journey with that said thank you very much for watching it is greatly appreciated drop a like comment any topics you've enjoyed below for future episodes subscribe click that bell icon check out the socials for more regular updates all that good stuff and we are done